Well, many kids are loading up on technology as they get back to school, along with those notebooks, the pencils, all of that stuff. Uh, so who is profiting from the kids these days? Well, joining us this morning to discuss this is Scott Kessler. He's the head of Standard & Poor's Technology Equity Research Group. Scott, uh, good to see you this morning. And, good to see you um, too, Betty. I can imagine that Apple would be doing very well with back to school, no? You imagine correctly. Uh, we think Apple and a variety of its product lines is probably the standout performer uh, this back to school season. And that's really been the case for uh, probably the last number of years at this point. Um, really, it's a three pronged um, attack on this market that really has Apple well positioned. First and foremost is the iPad. Clearly, the new product announced and introduced in the spring um, has really done very well. Right. We think that students are using it for a variety of different purposes. Then then you have the iPhone 4, recently introduced with, I think, um, some um, semblance of glitches, but nonetheless tracking very well. And then, of course, the computers, particularly uh, the MacBooks, those also are doing very well. Hey, Scott, it's Sheila Darmarajan here in the Bloomberg Newsroom. A quick question for you. Apple's iPad, clearly a big hit these days, but Kindle has been making a huge push towards college students back to school season. Do they actually stand a chance against Apple anymore? We think that. If you look at the competitive differentiation between uh, the Kindle and the iPad, what you see is, look, the Kindle is specifically designed for reading and actually for long form reading. It, it reflects that in the context of uh, the screen and the user experience. We think that the Kindle, especially with these lower price points, is more than holding its own. It's just that you need to think about the Kindle differently from the iPad because the iPad is really so many things to so many people. It's everything from a computer mm -hmm. to a games device to, in fact, an ebook reader. Uh, what about PCs, Scott? I mean, are kids loading up? as much on that as before or no? Well, we think from a unit perspective, um, the PC makers are doing relatively well. The problem is, is that when you think about pricing, that really has been a problem. And over the summer months, we definitely have seen a pullback in demand, likely reflective of, frankly, what's going on, not only in the broader economies of the world, with the uncertainty that all of us really have been kind of seeing and feeling, uh, but also, frankly, an inventory glut, because a lot of companies thought demand right. would be a lot stronger than it has been. The bottom line for PCs is it's been kind of a, an iffy back-to-school season. We think that a lot of folks have been migrating to uh, lower price point machines other than those from Apple, including netbooks and maybe even uh, increasingly some tablets. Scott, we saw Intel already pull back their uh, forecast because of a weak back-to-school season. Do you think they're just the first of many of the PC makers to do that? Well, if you look to uh, Asia, where a lot of manufacturers are actually based, uh, those companies actually report monthly sales figures. And in July, we saw, um, I don't know, say a number of companies indicating double-digit monthly sequential declines. That means from June to July, companies saw 10 percent or more uh, in declines. So really what that means is that there was this kind of seasonal and protect, uh, potentially cyclical softness. Mm -hmm. um, we're not sure to what extent that's played out, but we expect to hear more about it from companies, um, especially in their mid-quarter updates provided by uh, semiconductor and semiconductor equipment companies in the coming, uh, in the coming weeks. Scott, we'll have to leave it there, but good to talk with you. An interesting topic there about the back-to-school technology and what companies are, uh, are benefiting from that. Scott Kessler at S&P.